Hi everyone, this is Ariane, and we're going to have a tutorial on the very basics of Sakura Arms. Originally, I was going to record this using the uh, tutorial on the Bakafire page for Yoni website, but uh, that video ended up being over an hour long. So we're going to start here from scratch with the tabletop mod and just kind of go through, through things in order here. So here we are in the tabletop simulator mod. So from the start, we're given two options. We have pick two, which is fine for casual play, where you just you're going to pick two of the different Megami, which all the reference cards are up here right now. And your opponent will also pick two simultaneously, and then you reveal and plan accordingly. The more common way of playing is three band one, where each of you will select three Megami, and uh, you get to band one of your opponents, and your opponent gets to band one of yours. It's a little harder to just be straight up counterpicked in that case. Um, but for the purpose of explaining and teaching things and just learning, pick two is fine. So we're going to do that. So you'll see from the start, we have a list of all the Megami that populated on the bottom of the screen. Um, when you click a specific Megami, you'll get uh, their portrait. You'll see other cards over here. Um, and you'll see any alternate versions they have down here at the bottom. So Himika has her O and her A1. If I were to put in someone like Yumi, she doesn't have any alternate, so there's nothing there. Um, we'll go over cards here in just a minute, but first I'm going to pick some specific Gami to highlight different cards. Let's see, so we have this, and just keep it real simple. Swap going, ready up, and then I'm going to have to switch players to get the other one going. So the first step you have in the game after you have selected your characters is you are in deck building. So each Megami has seven normal cards and four special cards. You can only take seven normal cards and three specials into any given game. They can come from either of the goddesses. So of the 22 cards they each have, you're going to take 11, right? No, 10. Excuse me. Um, so on these card types, I'm not going to labor too much, but I uh, have attacks, actions, and enhancements. Those are the three varieties of cards. There's also two categories of cards. Uh, you heard me mention normals and specials earlier. So normal cards are all shuffled together to form your deck of cards that you draw and discard and etc. with. Then there are also special cards down here. You'll notice that each of these has a number in the top right. That is a flare cost that is required to play the card. Normally, they'll be face down in front of you, or in some cases, when you're playing in person, you would keep them in your hand with like a card dividing them. They also have a different card back, so you don't confuse them with the other cards if they're ever in your, uh, they ever get mixed in with your draw stack. So, let's see. Yeah, these also have the different card types too. So, you can see there's attacks, there's actions. And there's no special enhancement here, but those are relatively rare. And I'll cover all of that as we get to it. But for now, just know you get seven of these and three of these. So when you are building your deck, you want to consider what your opponent's going to do and what their ranges are and what the kind of the specials they're capable of. It's a little bit more advanced though, so what we really want to worry about is how we are going to win the game. 
And typically the way you do that is by playing attack cards. Attack card can only be played if you have if you are in the correct range, which is this bit in the top right, top left corner. Gosh, I am dyslexic. Generally, attack cards are the only way to deal damage to your opponent's life or aura. There are exceptions to this, but if you want to damage your opponent's life, which is required generally to win, then you will need to play attack cards. And to play the attack cards, you'll need to get into your effective range. So we want to bring those if we can. Action cards are cards that have no restriction on when you can play them. There are some exceptions to that, like if you look at... Uh, okay, that's an attack card with a restriction. Any card can have a text restriction on when you can use it, but... Okay, here's a good example. So this card you can actually play whenever you want, but because of the text on it, you only get this benefit if you meet the condition there. So you could play this at any range, but if the range is not three or less, then you would not take two tokens from Shadow and put them at a distance. And we're not going to worry about what that means just yet. Uh, I will get to it. So sure, we'll go ahead and bring that. And this card is an enhancement. Enhancements are kind of like actions in that you can play them out at any time without restriction on your turn. Well, I should specify that on your turn. You can play them out at any time. Uh, the, the restriction slash mechanic on enhancements that makes them distinct from attacks and skills is that they all have a charge, which is this number in the bottom left corner here. Now, uh, when you play an enhancement, you have to take tokens from your aura or from shadow equal to the charge on the enhancement. Let's go to the other side and pick a few cards. And then we're going to ready up. Okay, so now we finally have the board here. So let's go over these different areas. So first of all, this section here is your life. If this runs out, then you lose the game. This section here is your life. When it runs out, you lose the game. Your opponent's life. When it runs out, you win the game. These sections are not shared, by the way. So this here, this is completely cut off from your opponent's area here. This area in the blue is shared, however. So let's go over each of these different areas really quick. Again, uh, so this is your life. You need it to not lose the game. It's the objective of the game. Also, you'll note there are 36 Sakura tokens on board at the start of the game. This number generally won't change, but there are a few cards that will alter it. So I'm going to put myself to black really quick. So, yeah, the number of Sacred Tokens typically won't change. There are a couple different cards that will either take tokens from out of game or add tokens from out of game. Or, sorry, will either add tokens from out of game or remove tokens from the game, put them into out of game. Um, but to get back on topic, we have our flare here. Flare is used to pay for specials. Starts at zero. This is our aura. Aura is used to defend from attacks, to back up, and to build your flare. This is our opponent sections for the same thing. You can see it's nicely mirror imaged. This track here is distance. I talk about that more when I'm going over basic actions, but it is a shared area. So one side of the board does not belong to one opponent, or vice versa. Everything on here is available to both players. And the same is true for this area around shadow, this dark circle, or this area around distance, dark shadow that is called shadow. 
um, when you block an attack with Aura, those tokens will go to Shadow. When you put tokens on an enhancement, those tokens will slowly go to Shadow as that enhancement uh, loses power. This is charge, I guess is a better way to put it. That's all the different zones so far. You'll notice that they all have little symbols near them too. We have our life symbol, Aura, Flare, Shadow, and Distance. And these are all used on the different cards here, like you'll see here. We have Sine's uh, Outclass. Each zone also tells you what its initial is and what its maximum is. So Aura, you can see, it has an initial of 3, a max of 5. Life has an initial 10 and no limit. Player has an initial 0, no limit. Shadow, no limit. Distance is initial 10, and the most tokens that can be there is 10. Distance can actually go higher, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. So in your cards area, um, this is your draw pile, obviously. This is your vigor, which is a resource you use to pay for basic actions. I'll cover that when we start going over turns. Um, the mod distinguishes between two different piles. I think this is largely done in standard play, too, but uh, level 99 doesn't draw a distinction here. So any cards that you discard because uh, an effect told you to discard them face down or that you discard to take a basic action will go into your draw pile, your discard pile here. Any card that you play face up for its face up effect will go into the played pile here. Oh, and this is a flinch token. So if you ever are flinched, I think it's called stunned in the level 99 version. This goes on here. And the next time you would gain vigor, instead of gaining that vigor, you take your flinch token off. You can never be flinched more than one. Okay, so with that aside, ready to go over the start of the game. So first of all, as the mod does for us, we each would draw three cards from the top of our deck. So you can see got Outclass, Silent Wall, and Polite Return. And Himika, I wouldn't know this, but I'm have I have the hands open right now, so we can see both has backstep, impo walk, and shoot. So after we draw these cards, you can choose to take any number of them and put them on the bottom of your deck and then redraw that many cards. Do not shuffle your deck in between this. So if you there's a couple different mulligan strategies. Um Things to consider here, cards that you aren't going to be able to play in your first three turns are, are probably worth keeping in your hand so you can discard them as a basic action. So Silent Wall is a pretty okay keep. Flight Return is unlikely to be played in the first three turns, but it's possible. At any rate, it's probably better to have that one later. And this one could be played theoretically at any time, outclass, and it might even be effective, so we might hold it. But I will say that another thing to consider is if you discard two cards, then you know that you know the entire contents of your deck, the order that you're going to have it. You'll discard two, draw two. If you know what two cards are on the bottom, then through process of you know what cards you're going to get on your second turn. So oftentimes, discarding two or more cards is ideal, because it gives you complete information for three turns on what your own deck is going to be. So with Himika Obero, Himika has some of the longest range attacks in the game. Oftentimes, you'll just keep whatever looks good at the time. Backstep is a little bit... Uh, questionable on the first pass of the deck because your deck is even. So it's probably worth discarding that to the bottom of the deck and getting a replacement card. So we have one here and 
we draw one. So neither of us have got perfect information this time, but that's okay. Now, the player who goes first will have their vigor set to zero. And as a balancing measure, whoever is going second has their vigor set to... I'm going to delete lines really quick. Has their vigor set to um, one. So it's a slight fix, but... There is definitely a first player advantage in this game, so bear that in mind. Oftentimes games do come down to just having one more bigger than your opponent, though, especially if they're very close games, where no one's made any substantial mistakes. Okay. So you'll see on the board, too, they have the phase orders written out nicely. Um, when you're on your first turn and your opponent is on their first turn, this first start of turn phase is skipped. So we're not going to worry about that just yet. We're instead going to go to the main phase. So you'll see here it says there's there's two sections on the main phase. So at the start of your main phase, you can opt to take a normal turn where you ha can take basic actions or play normal cards in any order to in any amount. Or you take a throughout turn, where you play a throughout card, and you can only play one, and you do nothing else with your turn during your main phase. So what's a throughout card? A card that has this little yellow diamond next to it is a throughout card. Um, and typically they have very powerful effects. They're usually worth at least three or four uh action points worth of actions, bigger worth of actions, I guess you could say. So for instance, this one here, uh, Sign A, Silent Wall. When you play it, it's a charge 5, and you treat Sakura tokens on it as if they were on your aura whenever you are dealt damage. So this is like gaining 4 points of aura in one action, because you aren't spending any vigor or using any cards for it. But it has the downside that it's the only thing you're doing for your turn. And we can't really use it on our first turn because there's nowhere to charge it from. There's no tokens in Shadow and only three tokens in our aura. So we could play it turn one, and this is what will happen. You put it down here, or some people like to do this part of the board here. And there's nothing for it to grab in Shadow, but it has a charge of five, so we have to take as many tokens as we can from Shadow and our aura and put it on there. In this case, we would set our aura to zero. And then our turn would be over. We'd go to our end step. If there were three or more cards in our hand, we'd have to discard down to two cards in hand. So we're good there, at least. And then at the start of our opponent's turn, this would tick down into shadow during oh you know that doesn't happen let me uh, caveat that uh this would stay like this because uh normally that happens during the start of turn phase but the opponent is not doing that on their first so it would stay at three but we gained nothing and took, taken all our aura and put it onto an enhancement then when our next turn happens this is going to end up taking down to shadow so overall not a great play right now But that's just to give you kind of an overview of how enhancements work. So later in the game, this will be a bit of a powerhouse card. It also has some benefits with how Sine's uh, mechanic works idea, where if you have one or fewer sacred tokens in your aura, your cards that have that effect get strengthened in some way. And to an extent, it also applies to Tokoyo, who has a artistic where she gets benefits if her vigor is too. I probably could have brought more of her cards in this build, but I was just going quick. Anyway, this card we can play at any range and move a token to or from distance to shadow. Right now there's nothing in shadow, but we could take a token from distance and put it into shadow by playing this card face up. Like that. 
Is that good right now? Well, not really. And Glancing Strike, we could play only at range 4. You'll see that right there. Now, that is not currently playable because we are at distance 10. So I can't even choose to play this face up. I can't play it face up and have it do nothing. I just can't play it at all because we're not at the right range. So I have to find a way to manipulate the board state to be able to play this. So what we do then is we take basic actions. And these are all listed on the vigor card here. So you either spend one vigor and dis or discard one card from your hand. It's an or, not an end, important. Um, and then you choose one of five different actions to do four of which are listed here on the card. So the first thing that you will often do in a game is, especially against Himika, discard a card and move forward. When you move forward, you take a token from distance and add it to your aura. This arrow here. Um, another thing that is common when you're starting the game is to take a turn, take a basic action to focus, where you take a token from your aura and add it to your flare. A lot of times this is pretty safe to do early on. It frees up your aura so you can move forward more easily, and I'll get to that again. Sorry, in a second. Um, actually, let's just do that now. So let's see. We take, discard a card to move forward. And let's go ahead and discard another card to move forward again, because Himika can shoot us at really far ranges, so we really want our defenses strong. And discard another card to, well, we want to move forward, but our aura is full, so now we can't. So that option is completely blocked off from us. The other options that we can do now are to move backwards, which would be silly. And when you move backwards, you take a uh, token from your aura and add it to distance. This is the only way to increase the distance with basic actions. Actually, it's not. Scratch that from the record. This is one way to increase the distance with basic actions. The other way I will cover a moment. So anyway, yeah, our aura is locked. We can't move forwards. What can we do? We can take a token and put it into our flare. That unlocks our aura so we can move up. Or we could just hold on to our card and wait for our opponent to attack us on their turn. So Himika's turn is yeah, not terribly strong here. So probably what she ends up doing is discard focus and just focus again, wait for the attack cards to line up and set up some traps from Obero, which is an effect that lets uh, her play cards from her discard pile before she reshuffles her deck. Himika's special perk is uh, some of her cards get a bonus if Himika has played two more cards before that card. So if it's the third or later card played, she gets an effect called Inferno on some of her cards. Himika also has a Vigor that could be spent, but uh, she's probably just going to save that for next turn. Okay, so start of turn. One, actually, 
Here's another play he could have done, and I kind of like this one. It's silly. All right, so instead of, and this is going to showcase how uh, enhancements work really nicely. So Himika focuses twice, and then plays. And we'll say one of the focuses happened with Vigor instead. And this is not a very great turn, mind you, but... Mika will play... Red Bullet. This is just a 3-1, but it costs zero flare. Doesn't look like anything terribly impressive. But... Getting a 3-1 for 0 just almost always means that your opponent is at 1 less life. Now, this is the other anatomy of attack cards that I haven't talked about yet. This number here on the bottom, I said 3-1 earlier, so you can see it's 3-1. The 3 is the damage it does to aura, and the 1 is the damage it does to life. So you can see this is a 0 cost, range 5 to 10. 3-1 attack. So that means that if Cyanate wants to block this attack with Aura, you will have to, if Cyanate Tokoyo wants to block it, you'll have to spend 3 Aura to Shadow. Which, um, yeah, maybe that's okay right now, given that... Oh, okay. Wait, 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 wait. So, there's an important step I missed here. <laughs> All right, so if you were playing Himika Obro and you weren't a noob like me, first thing you would do is you would play Revitalize. So you see this is unguarded. It's a trap, which isn't relevant now. The trap part just means that you can play it before you reshuffle. And it's an enhancement. So we had to pull four tokens from our aura and from shadow, but there's only one token between both of them. So one token from our aura is going to go onto this card. Then we can play red bullet, which is a 3-1. And let's just say that you take this to aura here. One thing you need to consider when you're deciding where to take damage is trying to make the most out of your life. So typically, it, it's commonly said, and commonly very true, that if you are attacked with a 3-1, you should just take it to life. And one of the reasons for that is that you're you're trading your life for aura, essentially. And when you're trading your life for aura, you want to get the best deal you possibly can. So like, in this case, let's say I do this, then Himika is going to play a 2-1. Now I have to choose if I want to lose my last two aura, or take one life damage. So if I choose to take life now, I feel a little silly, right? Because I could have spent that life and had three aura if I had taken life from the earth. Or let's say it's even worse than that and we're at a, at a distance where a 2-2 two -two can be played or something. If I'm losing two life to save two aura, then I'm only getting one aura for each life point. Or even worse still, if you're at, against Chikage or something, the there's... Various Megami that have attacks that do one aura damage and two life damage, and if those hit your life, it's like the worst possible deal. So we need to be really careful about what attacks our opponent can throw out. But for now, actually, because we want to move up and get out of Himika's range, maybe we do just take both the aura. A little sad that we got rid of Silent Wall there. On the other hand, oh, and I didn't get over that, sorry, I should talk about that too. Alright, so, again, you can see this one is range 4 to 10. Attack is a 2 or a 1 life attack. That's what the 2-1 is. Now, let's backtrack here and say I don't take it to aura this time. If you take attacks to life, your life doesn't go to shadow. Not normally. Instead, your life will go to flare. And this is this kind of helps to uh, balance the tides a little bit because it means that you gain resources when you are 
put into a losing position. You don't just keep losing and losing more. I mean, you do, but you get some means to make a comeback. So this is probably fine, right? So let's say they have they have no more cards, no more bigger. They're probably done here, right? Sure. Well, let's see. So she played one, two, three attacks. So Inferno is active right now. Yeah, sure. She'll go ahead and use Vermilion Field. So this costs two flare. If it's the third or later card in the turn, then two shadow goes to distance. All our hard work moving forward has been undone. And that card's not in range, so it can't be played. Not that you would play it here anyway. And then at the bottom, you'll see some specials have this, and some specials have another thing called immediate resurgence. But it says Resurgence, you have no cards in your hand. So what does that mean? That means at the end of your turn, if you meet that condition, you can flip the special face down and re- So it's now the end of Himika's turn. There's nothing else she can do, really, because she's not in range to play this last special. So this card will turn face down because there's no cards in hand. So that condition is met. Um, I'm going to find another special really quick to show immediate resurgence. All right, this one's pretty simple. Perfect. Urena. See, this one says immediate resurgence, resolve, your life becomes three or less from four or more. So what this means is the very instant your life becomes three or less, from, usually from taking damage, but it could also be from reshuffling or it's something like that, this card will flip face down. That can happen at any time on your opponent's turn, middle of an action reaction exchange. So that's important to note for things, especially like Drain Devil. But okay. Oh, whew. so that was just two turns. I feel like I've been talking a lot. So at the start. Of our second turn, we've already taken a life damage. This is against Himika, though, so that's kind of expected. We go through our start of turn, finally. Finally, we're going to do, this, do a full turn. So, first of all, we gain a Vigor. Second of all, you can see here, Enchants lose one Sakura token. So, Vitalize will lose one Sakura token. And this will trigger its disenchant effect, which is to choose one of your devoted special cards and turn it face down. This means that Himika's red bullet flips face down right out the gate. Oof. We're going to be facing another 310 next turn, conceivably. All right, so now we have the option to reshuffle. Probably not a great option since we still have four cards in our deck. When you want to reshuffle your deck, you have to pay one of your life to flare. And when you do that, all the cards in your played pile and your discard pile rejoin your draw pile and you shuffle it. Um, any enhancements that are in play will stay out here in play as long as they still have tokens on them. Once that token is gone, it goes to this pile here. Also, you'll see this enhancement had the keyword unguarded on it. And that is on a few different enhancements. And what it means is if you take life damage from an attack card, then the card immediately goes into your discard pile without resolving any of its disenchant effects. OK. Where am I at? All right, so we are we are at optional reshuffle stage. We're not going to do that this turn. Next, you would draw two cards. And so you might be you might have thought like, oh, well, what if I never want to reshuffle? Well, if you need to draw two cards and you have no cards left in your deck, for each card that you were supposed to draw but couldn't draw, you take one damage to your aura or your life, whichever. So let's go ahead and draw two. 
Oh, uh, that happened because I'm black. Uh, let me, uh, yeah, if you hover a deck and press the button, you draw that many cards. If you're the game master and you press the button, you deal that many cards. Normally when you're playing, you can hover a deck and press any number key and you'll draw that many cards. Cool little trick there, but I can't use it while I'm GM. All right. So let's see. We drew cut down, which is range four to five, and built slam, which is range two to three. Also, we have outclass still. All right. Well, given what happened last turn, I think it's just got to be a no holds barred move forward. I made some grave errors building this deck, didn't I? So another thing to consider here, actually, is building Flare. So we'll go ahead and do that, too, because now we have this card we can... So that's that's about the gist of that. Um, so a couple other things to talk about. Okay, well, let's go ahead and do Himika's second turn, and then I'll move on. Last few bits here. So arrow effects. This is not a good example for arrow effects. This is a good example for arrow effects. So when you see a card with an arrow effect, that just means exactly what it looks like. You move that many tokens from that zone to the other zone. Um, also after attack effects. So let's see here. Himika's in range. So, sure, we'll blast. Red bullet. Ah, 3-1. Okay, so, yeah, sure, we don't really mind our aura being depleted, because we want to move up anyway. So now Himika is going to play Magnum, which is a 3-2. We don't have the aura to block it, so we don't have the choice now on where we take this damage. It has to go to life. Unless we have some means of adjusting that. So there's one other card subtype I haven't talked about yet because I am a bad teacher. And that is the reaction. So you'll see here, this is a special reaction. And reactions are marked by a, this pink diamond. When do you want to play a reaction? You actually, let, me, let me rephrase that. So you can play a reaction... As normal, so this can be played as an attack card with 0 to 10 range. So we can use that pretty much anywhere at any time on our turn. But to play it as a reaction, our opponent has to attack us. As they just now have. So now that they've made an attack, we have an opportunity to play our reaction. And we will here. So we react, playing Silent Icebreaker. We have to pay the flare cost for our special which is two, and then we have a 1-1 one, one attack. Now, Himika was silly here and did not use any of her uh, actions before attacking to gain aura. So this is just going to be a hit to life, because they can't block our 1-1 one, one either. They're getting a very bad trade there. That's good for us. Now. After attack, the attack that we played this card as a reaction to gets minus one, minus one. So that means that Magnum is now a two one. That still means that we can't block it, but now we're only taking one life damage. Too. Now also, also, Magnum has an after attack effect. You'll see this after attack effect is that Himika has to move one token from life to shadow. So you know, normally when you take life damage, it goes to your flare. Well, Magnum is costly, so it goes straight to shadow. And now, here, and Himika will take the other basic action that I have neglected to talk about because I'm a bad teacher and recover create a little behind schedule so discard one and recover lets you take a token from shadow and add it to your aura as another side note all these basic actions 
are displayed on the board. So we have forward, backward, aura. No, oh, sorry. <laughs> we have move forward, move backward. You can see that backward is an arrow from aura to distance. Forward is an arrow from distance to aura. Recover, which is an arrow from shadow to your aura. And then focus, which is an arrow from your aura to your flare. There are also these red arrows. So this jagged red arrow means that when you take damage to aura, it goes from your aura to shadow. This jagged red arrow is when you take damage to your life, it goes to your flare. And this red arrow is just signifying where flare goes when you send it. So uh, one, a couple other things to talk about now, really quick. Just to wrap up. First, distance can, is a shared pool, and it's an abstraction. It doesn't really matter where the tokens are in distance. This is equally valid, equally seven distance. Same thing with this. This is the exact same as this. Oh, okay. I didn't select all of them. Okay. As this. Which is the exact same thing as this. So if you're ever backed into a corner, like so, you can still move backwards. <laughs> Not by gaining bigger, mind you. And the other last bit to talk about is a rule called master distance. So whenever you're in a position where there is only two Sakura in distance, you can no longer move forward using basic action. So if I were to take the forward move action here, I can't. <laughs> so <clears throat> we are stuck at this distance, and there is no way to continue forward with basic actions. Again, that's just with basic actions. So if I were to take uh, this card here, outclass and play that from hand at range two since this is an arrow effect and not a basic action and there's no restriction on when i use it it's actually fine for me to go from distance two to distance one now the other rule about master distance is that when you choose to The other rule about master distance is when you're in master distance, which is range 2 or less by default, there are cards that adjust this, um, you, can, you gain access to a new basic action called retreat. When you, it retreat replaces forward when you're in master distance. It lets you take a token from shadow and move it to distance. Again, you can only do this basic action when you're at master distance. So from here, I would have to take from my aura to continue backward. OK, I think I covered just about everything there as far as normal ways to play. Again, you want to take all your opponent's life to win normally. You must play attack cards to do that, unless you are playing a few specific characters, a Lokaru who can win the action cards. Um, there's also a couple alternate victory conditions that I could talk about briefly. Shikage's Grim Path is pretty technical to do, but once you know how it works, it's simple enough. But it's a win condition that doesn't involve hurting your opponent at all. And then there's also Kane, who uh, honestly I could probably do an entire video on, and it would be bad because I don't play her enough. Uh, 
but she can win through fulfilling various different conditions and what's called her storyboard. That's this character here. Uh, I think I'm going to wrap it up here, though. So, yeah, if uh, you guys have any more questions or comments, let me know. Um, if this video is bad, don't let me know. And, yeah, I'll talk to you later.